This is a 3D printed ice cream machine. And while it may look simple, there's actually quite a few engineering challenges that had to be conquered in order to make it work. But before we go into why I made certain engineering and design decisions, why would I want to 3D print an ice cream machine in the first place? First off, designing things is just really fun, and I really enjoy it. Recently, I've been designing a new object every single day. And here's a couple of my favorites. This is a print-in-place phone stand that includes a worm gear. This design doesn't need to be assembled, it prints in place. This is how the print-in-place phone stand looks in the slicer. Slicing programs prepare 3D models for 3D printing. The slicer you see here is called Cura. This is where you'll determine all of the 3D print settings. Cura's in version 5 and all of the default slicing settings are pretty good. So basically, if I preview the design and I scroll down, you can see all the different layers that the 3D printer will 3D print. This is another print-in-place design and it has four moving gears on the front of the container. And this is yet again another print in place design, but this one is a ball launching marble machine. This one is designed to have a spring like launching system. It uses a thin piece of printed plastic as the spring, but it all prints in one piece. I could potentially make videos showcasing these designs as well in the future. The program I use to design most of the things that I make is Fusion 360 by Autodesk. And here you can see some of the designs that I've been working on recently. Fusion 360 is great for all different types of mechanical designs, but you could also use it to design fun things like this articulated manta ray. If you want to learn how to use Fusion 360 to create your own designs for 3D printing, I have online courses teaching Fusion 360 and the design process. There are links in the description below. Now back to the ice cream machine. There are four more reasons why I wanted to design this ice cream machine. First, I ran out of ice cream. Second, I had a lot of extra heavy cream in the fridge. Third, homemade ice cream is really fun to make and it tastes so good. And fourth, I thought there was a need for a small portable ice cream machine that utilizes containers that most people have at home already. So the container I chose to use for this project was a standard mason jar. They're extremely popular for canning and making jams and jellies. So I had to think to myself, how would I make an ice cream machine with a mason jar? And what exactly is an ice cream machine? So basically for an ice cream machine, you have to slowly freeze cream while stirring it. So I thought I can make some sort of attachment that goes on top and stirs the cream while it's freezing in the freezer. So here are the results for the first version of the ice cream machine design. It's a decent design in my opinion, but there are a few major flaws. The first major flaw is that it has two exposed plastic gears above an open container. This would be okay if we weren't dealing with food. The second major flaw is the fact that I didn't want to use any sort of 3D printed parts to actually stir the ice cream. My initial solution to this was to make a bunch of different sized attachment holes so people could use any sort of stirring device they already have at home. The problem with this design is that there's no standard size spoon or stirring device. Even with a bunch of different sized holes and slots, it still didn't really work for most stirring devices I had. And if it wasn't going to work for me and I'm designing it, then it's definitely not going to work for other people. The one thing that I am happy about with this design is how well the threads work. To make the threaded piece, I essentially modeled the rim of the mason jar. This consisted of wrapping a spiral around a cylinder. Then I made the actual piece that will screw onto the mason jar and I subtracted the rim from this piece. And I made sure to add a little bit of extra spacing so that way it's not too tight. And then I proceeded to finish the design. The recipe I'm using for this ice cream is extremely simple. I did look online for some ice cream recipes, but they were all way overly complicated and I had to scroll past about 30 ads just to find where the ingredients were. So I decided to not listen to any of those online recipes and just make up my own recipe. This recipe is extremely simple. It consists of sugar and cream, and you could use any type of sugar or sweetener that you want. In this case, I'm using brown sugar. I highly recommend using a scale for your measurements when cooking because volumetric measurements make absolutely no sense for cooking. Ironically though, I did not weigh the ingredients for this recipe and I did eyeball it. Next, simply add enough water to fully saturate the sugar.
Mix it around in the jar and then put it in the microwave for about 20 to 25 seconds. When you take it out of the microwave, continue stirring it around in the jar and the sugar should fully dissolve. Next, simply add the cream to the jar. Be careful not to add too much cream to the jar because when you put something in the freezer, the contents do expand. You want enough air inside of the jar so that if the contents expand, the air will compress and this will decrease the risk of the glass jar breaking. After about six hours in the freezer, it was finally done. And while the ice cream did turn out really good and had a really good texture, it still made me a little bit nervous having the open exposed container. So with that, I basically went back to the drawing board and thought, what am I actually trying to accomplish here? If we look at things from a first principles approach, what do we really need to do? Originally, I thought we needed something to go inside the container and actually stir it. But I don't think that's actually true. We just need to keep the mixture mixing itself. Also, the first design required a jar with the exact same thread. And maybe you don't have this exact mason jar. So if there's a different design that still accomplished mixing the internal mixture without having an open container and allowed for anyone want to use their own jar or container. Then I realized if I just rotate the jar, the mixture inside will mix itself. The only problem is you'd think maybe it would just form concentric frozen circles of cream because it's freezing from the outside in. Instead of just assuming something won't work, it's important to actually try and, and see for yourself if it will work. So I hopped back into Fusion 360 and started with the design. The first challenge I had to overcome was figuring out how I wanted to secure the jar. The important thing with this new design is that many different types of jars could fit. It doesn't have to be the same exact mason jar. So my solution to this problem was by using a thin band that is thin enough to be flexible. But the main thing that makes this design work is this clip here. The PLA plastic parts are all flexible enough to securely clamp in place. And if your jar is a little bit too small, you could always pad it with some paper towels. Here we can see the clamping mechanism in action. Simply insert your jar of choice into the plastic holder. You can see how, especially with the paper towels, there's a little bit of cushion that allows it to be clamped. Now we can simply attach this very satisfying clamping piece. And now the jar is secure inside of the ice cream machine. If you want to remove the jar from the ice cream machine, you could simply remove the clamping device by sliding it up or down. Without the clamp, it's extremely easy to remove the jar. The rest of the design is fairly straightforward. We have a gear reduction to help the ice cream machine have a little bit more torque, and everything is secured with C-clips. I guess more precisely, we could call this a hex clip. The axle is a hexagon shape because the axle needs to spin with the gear and I'm using a N20 60 RPM motor that I've kind of sketchily hot glued into place. And with that, version two of the ice cream machine is finished. But the question is, can it actually make good ice cream? In reality, this ice cream machine will be in the freezer, but it does look really cool while it's working and I don't wanna be filming in the freezer. So here's a really satisfying montage of it working. And with that, here are the final results of the ice cream. And for the recipe I'm showing here, I added chocolate chips. This ice cream could be the best ice cream I've ever had. It was literally so rich, creamy, and smooth. Absolutely delicious. If you wanna learn how to design things like this ice cream machine, check out the links in the description below. Thanks for watching and happy printing.